What is this? I... I can't remember. Not a thing, only I feel. A yearning, something I never felt before. What's happening to me? <gasps> Tell me, Hunter. Could this be joy? Ah. <sighs> Forgotten in the shock, our chest set sprawls. An ancient kingdom, earthquake overturned, shut in the dark, behind the cabinet doors. The sacked metropolis, the useless wars. Fragments of battles waged when all was lost. A war, we can't say when, we can't say where. To Tiny armies, carved, immobilized. Two armies diametrically opposed. Two mirror image armies cast aside and jumbled, sliding from the tilted board where one by one mortals are driven off. And square by square, mortals are borne away and left for dead behind the cabinet doors. Jumbled as one, the slayers and the slain. And each to each all wars are civil wars. Two warring sides carved from a broken tusk. The broken tusk from which they're carved a gods. Whose sacrifice still overhangs the board. Where everything that ever happened fades. That night, when all was lost, he let his head sink back against the pillows, took my hand. Our chessboard set aside forever now. Two players, matched in wonder and resolved, called into other wars, and not in play. Though all those being riddles lay unsolved, and asked me for a story, sinking back. A being riddle buried in a story. A tale about the origins of chess. I sat beside him, huddled toward the bed. Annihilation gusting near. All night, a book lay open in my lap unread. Just as the ink was drying on the law that non-combatants are inviolate, out of the blue, Heaven colliding wars, and mirror image towers moving off, ashes impregnated with human souls. The battles of the Mahabharata lay faded in our ancient paperback. Dark yellow paper crumbled from the binding, old wards scorching the page. We idled there together at the smoke carved cliffs of heaven. The hero archer halted, hung his head, his godly bow Gandiva drooping down, a dead weight on his shoulder. Cognizant of useless losses, useless vanquishings, and having seen his enemies advance, the mirror image mortals drawing near were family members, sacred teachers, friends, his arrows humming on the verge of flight before behind. He halted, hung his head. This battle is not mine. I will not fight. All night, the book lay open in my lap. A beam riddle buried in a story. I leafed to the beginning. Long ago and far away and once upon a time, in such a night as this, in such a night, with mirror image towers moving off, where all was lost and nothing to be done, out of the blue, heaven colliding wars, the god of writers broke his pen in half. The god of writers rushing to record the battles of the Mahabharata, 
the onslaughts recollected blow by blow in reconstructed sequences of time. Whose agony, whose grievance justified, which squandered universals, squandered lies, in which side had possession of the board, and you had won and lost and lost and won, hurriedly trying to record the names of each and everyone who died, mid genealogy, mid epitaph. The god of writers took his pen in half. His pen lay useless, broken in the midst of everything that's happened until now, prefaced by everything that came before. A tale about the origins of chess. Endings accumulating endlessly. Unending wars beyond his broken pen. Once upon a time, war drums aroused chaotic gongs, and horns wailing for war were summoning the pieces to the board, and chariots in slow motion grinding past on mammoth wheels carved with battle speed were drawing toward a clutch of soldier pawns, with spears like lightning springing from the ground, and elephants arising on all fours, with how to swaying, tugging on their ropes, were jangling their rope-strung iron bells, and brilliant banners, wind-whipped on their poles, were ringing with the streams of bell strings high in northern India. He squeezed my hand. What sentence was he writing when it broke? smile. In such a night, with weeks to live. Pajamas fever-soaked, trying to stave annihilation off another night. The gentleness that nothing could repay. I pressed his hand's blue veins against my lips. A bedtime story, all that we had left. In mirror image towers moving off. We're never told. The story doesn't say. It doesn't tell us where it broke or when. The story simply says he broke his pen. Perhaps it broke mid-sentence when he wrote, Even Lord Krishna couldn't end the wars. In mirror image towers turned to smoke. Orb broke in the reverberating shock of war drums struck so hard the heads of drums exploded outward into gaping stars and bloodstained towers dematerialized ashes impregnated with human souls who couldn't save each other or themselves their stories broken off the fragments fused strangers and neighbors enemies and friends soldiers and non-combatants Used. Alone. The conquered and the conqueror were one, and all that could be done had now been done, and once upon a time, in such a night, just as the ink was drying on the law, that non-combatants are inviolate, a postulate across all possible worlds, a distant shock, a shock we can't say what, a shock that jarred the cabinet doors apart. The cabinet doors start open on the sight of mirror image towers moving off. A chest set sprawls, forgotten in the shock. A war, we can't say when, we can't say where, evaporated. Nothing happened here. The nameless battles surging through a maze had vanished. Everything that happens fades. A thousand nights of play had disappeared, as if the thousand nights had never been. In all that could be done had now been done, and then another night was added. One. The black castles upended on their squares, poured shadow from their chin-carved Kant's crenellations. The warlords at a standstill. Latency. The jinn who oversaw the Balkan Wars unsheathed his knife in 1369, idolatrously carving sets of chess for Tamburlaine, not knowing what they're for. And eavesdropped on the stories night by night, 
What is a labyrinth of bloodless war? Shahrazad began. What is a maze whose walls are fabricated out of air? Towers and mosques appeared beneath his blade. Trumpets and parapets and siege machines with pennants fluttering. Armies appeared from cities in Shahrazad's archives. Baghdad, Aleppo, Cairo, Samarkand. What makes the indivisible divide? He set the curious idols on the squares. At once the squares were fully occupied with forces moving of their own accord. The fields of blackbirds opened, all in play, to facing mirror image Prince Lazars, seated on tiny thrones, knee-deep in ponds. Their armies whittled down, their kingdoms carved with cutting implements, the drums of war exploding outward into gaping stars. He swept them off and set them out again, to facing mirror image Bahajets executing thunderbolts campaigns through millimeter lines drawn up between what was foreseeable and what foreseen. Squares like iron cages welded shut. He swept them off again and set them out. Two facing mirror image tamberlands with bone carved dynasties superimposed on boards with extra square extended from the paths where Mings had locked the Gate of Jade to counter realms where little sultan kings wrist-bound and ankle-bound with knots entwined on ropes that he could pull from Samarkand were forced to shuffle, yanked from side to side east-west, before behind. Redoubled now, blindfolded fury willed another pawn to move, with all in play, all fury blind, and blood-stained towers dematerialized like black castles. Upended on the squares, Shahrazad mid tail in such a night when 80,000 troops of Genghis Khan had finished their besieging of Herat. Its towers tilted sideways on the ground. Only 40 inhabitants survived. 40 from a million trembling souls. The victor galloped. Eight. What is the maid whose walls no one has ever touched or seen? whose walls are rearranged with every step, a labyrinth whose walls are built of air, and may as well be built from quarried stone that elephants enslaved by Tamburlaine were forced to drag from India and set in moving walls in phantom battlefields. Intangible, and yet so obdurate, no potentate can overturn or raise their stones, or rearrange their twists and turns, to relocate the secret passageways that guard the throne rooms where they sit exposed. What is this ma immaterial labyrinth? He stopped his knife, mid-air, mid-tail, mid-war, mid-massacre, mid-tournament, mid-siege, and saw his face reflected in the blade where gouts of other jinns slid from the edge, and phantom pictures flickered in his brain. The teller and the listener were one. Creator and created each to each, two players matched in wonder and resolve. But morning came. Shahrazad withdrew. The riddle broken off. The flames blown out. The thousand nights blown out like candle flames, but blown out by whose lips she doesn't say. Self-lit perhaps and self-extinguishing, and stored wherever unlit flames are kept. All vanishing, all self-creating time evaporated. Nothing happened here, though white smoke burgeoned from a thousand wicks. The bloodless battles surging through a maze, where everything that ever happened fades, were all in play, and yet his knife was red in Persia's brilliant morning sun. He fled to rinse his knife 
in mountain waterfalls hanging above Afghanistan and saw beyond the mountains of the Hindu Kush, which means the slaughter of the infidels. Lord Krishna, whirling in his chariot, returning from his quest to end the wars. As gaily as a grasshopper her whirls in his green chariot, forth on summer gusts in brilliant sunshine with everything in play, Lord Krishna whirled above Himalaya, with bell strings streaming from his chariot poles, returning from his quest to end the wars, the useless wars, the Mahabharata, the tale of all that's happened until now, prefaced by everything that came before with everything in play, and all in play, the god of writers rushing to record a tale about the origins of Jess, where everything that ever happened fades, endings accumulated, yet his pen had found the end of war, caught up to all that ever happened, all that came before, in synchronizing all the thens and nows, and writing how Lord Krishna, sweeping down, returning from his quest to end the war, sprang from his chariot, and peeling bells broke from their ropes, and soldiers broke their swords, and archers broke their arrows. Elephants were kneeling down in wonder on the squares, with broken tusks lowered in reverence. And women shook their chimes in ribbon streams, and children swarmed and scooped the just for joy. The wars were at an end. But Krishna said, light-footed, springing from his chariot seat, and overjoyed to see them, but surprised. Oh no, I couldn't bring an end to war. I can't untie the immaterial cords that bind us to our deeds. Nobody can. Intangible, the strands that tie themselves in transitory knots of who and where, and then untying of their own accord. But all that could be done has now been done, and all is done in play, all done in play. A gust of bells died off, dispirited. The battles of the Mahabharata crumbled to dust across the checkered board. The mortals shrinking back falling away, all driven off, not knowing where, beyond the squares, beyond existences, and overhung with anguish and malaise, the banners, shaken out in triumph, sank. Far off the blood-stained cries of elephants, mourning the jumbled slayers in the slain. What is it binds us to our deeds? What is the sacrifice that can't be asked of us? Unbidden universe, what summons us, awakening unbidden in its midst? Then all those fragment sequences in time, swept toward a place before chronology, where everything is happening at once, and everything that ever happened fades, forgotten like an unrecorded storm that swept an earth a thousand years ago, ten thousand years, a hundred thousand years, Materialized and dematerialized. The Yugas, briefer than a lightning fork. The hero archer halted, hung his head. His godly bow Gandiva drooping down, a dead weight on his shoulder, agony of mirror image mortals pressing near. Family members, sacred teachers, friends, useless losses. Useless vanquishings. The arrows ready, humming on the verge of flight behind before. Implausible that armies in slow motion craved control of barren, useless squares. Better to be a beggar in the road than king of this. He sagged beneath the dead weight of his bow. His ancient arrows crumbling in his hand, eroded, yet their force could not be spent. Set these alight! My weapons should have been reduced to ashes and cinders long ago! This battle is not mine, I will not fight! 
The cabinet doors jarred open at the shock. A mildewed drawer in northern India. A checkered game board breaking at the seams. In crumbled faces and worm-riddled wood and chariots crumbled on their axle beams and chunks of uncarved ivory petrified in heaps of ivory shamings. Untold tales of battles never fought and unlived lives in useless squares for legendary wars that never happened. Death that no one died. A board where ivory molecules inside. Unborn is best of all. Unborn is best. Lord Krishna swept his hand. Bring me the board. Bring me the material labyrinth where everything that ever happened fades. Bring me the knife for carving elephants from broken ivory tusks. Bring me the lathe from which the mirror image towers are turned. Bring me the kings and counselors and pawns. Bring me the conquering banner death shook out above the long forgotten battlefields. And all in play, he set the pieces out, his blue hand moving quickly. Latency. He saw the indivisible divide. Raja and Mantri, Gaja, Padati. At once, the squares were fully occupied, with forces moving of their own accord, all synchronized in present then and now. What's won or lost when this is lost or won? A war we can't say where, we can't say when. He swept them off, and set them off again. A flutter gust of bells. War drums aroused chaotic gongs, and horns wailing for war. Oblivious, gong-deafened potentates and blank-faced counselors mirrored in a maze, and palms arrayed for shockwave turbulence, with swords like lightning leaping from the ground, and deed-bound archers, bell-strung elephants arising slowly, swaying on all fours, the thunderbolts formation, lightning flagged, out of the blue, heaven colliding war. All summoned to the board, they can't say why, a war, we can't say when, we can't say where. Lord Krishna set an archer on the square. The archer torqued in fury, back in play, twisting it around to see what lay behind the sightless mazes, unseen labyrinths awaiting him. As if no time had passed, where mirror image towers turned to smoke and ashes, slowly moving on and saw the god of writers rushing to record the names of each and every one who died. Ashes impregnated with human souls, who couldn't save each other or themselves, in never-ending wars compounded by oblivion. Mortal forgetfulness. What was it, Krishna told him long ago, back when another ancient war occurred? Moments replacing moments only once. My deeds of wondrous love I here reveal. There are no slayers here. There are no slain. The conquered and the conqueror are one. All come to me. All are accounted for. The hero archer halted, hung his head, his godly bow Gandiva drooping down and turned beyond the boundaries of the squares. He saw Lord Krishna seated playing chess. Lord Krishna, who had cousins on both God's side. He saw the blue hand gesture toward the board. All that could be done has now been done. I am the same to all, Lord Krishna said. To all beings, my love is ever one. And here, mid-tale, mid-war, mid-labyrinth, mid-birth and death, mid-once upon a time, in midway through the names of all who died, in wars we can't say where, we can't say when. Their stories broken off, the fragments fused mid-genealogy, mid-epitaph. Annihilation gusting nearer, here, here, the god of writers broke his pen.